We're now ready to move on to lenses, and one of the really nice things about lenses is that they're very similar to mirrors, as we are about to see. One thing that's a little more complicated with lenses, though, is that you have two surfaces you have to think about instead of just one, as you had with a mirror, because the light is going to pass through both surfaces of your lens. They both influence the optical properties of the lens. And so you can have a whole variety of lenses defined by the two surfaces. This is called double convex because both surfaces are bowing out. This one is plano convex, plano on this side, convex over there. You don't need to memorize these or anything. And there's actually a lot more than just these. But we can still divide all lenses into two nice and tidy categories converging or diverging. So it's pretty easy to see that a lens like this is going to cause rays to converge because you have convex surfaces on both sides, but it gets a little more complicated if you have convex here and kind of a concave, even though it's called meniscus, uh, you have kind of a concave surface there. So the trick to knowing whether it's converging or diverging is to compare the thickness in the middle of the lens with the thickness on the edge of the lens. really love how this erases my lines all the time. So this guy is fatter in the middle than it is on the end. So is this guy, and even this one that bows in is still fatter in the middle than on the ends. So that's how we know that all of these are going to be converging. Here, this one's obviously diverging. This one's a little more complicated because you've got concave here, convex there, but it's fatter on the ends here than it is in the middle, so this will be a diverging lens. All right, let's look at what happens to parallel rays as they travel through a converging lens. So this guy's fatter in the middle, it's converging. We have rays coming parallel. Again, this is from a distant object or rays from the sun, and those will all focus at a single location, and guess what we call it? Yes, the focal point and the distance from the lens to that location we call the focal length. Um, this here isn't going to come up in our problem solving too much, but just so you have a little bit more robust understanding. Um, if this is really the only picture you have in your mind, you might think, well, if a lens isn't lined up perfectly, it's not going to be able to focus rays. But they will focus parallel rays even coming in at an angle. In fact, they will focus at the same distance from the lens. So you could call this here the focal plane. Let me show you a picture of that. So, uh, not that one. Oh, yes, this one. Okay, so this is uh, from the FET website. This is called Geometric Optics. So as I move my object here up and down, the angle at which the rays are striking the, uh, <clears throat> striking the lens changes, but the image just moves up and down in the same plane because these focal lengths are still the same. Okay, so this is a converging lens. Here, if we look at a diverging lens, the rays will come along, and instead of being focused to a point, they get spread out on the other side of the lens. Now, if we have our eyeball over here observing, we can still see this image, and that image appears like it came from a focal point over here if we extrapolate these lines backwards. So again, that distance we would call the focal length between the lens and the point from which parallel lines, once they emerge, appear to have come from. Let me show you another quick demo. So if we have a bunch of rays of light, this guy, fatter in the middle than on the edges, so this is going to be a converging lens, and we can see that all of the light goes together at that point, and then uh, keeps on going after that. Let me see if I can line this up a little better. There you go. And even if I flip this lens around, it actually has the same identical properties regardless of the direction that the light is coming from. Okay, and then we get this guy. He's fatter on the edges, skinnier in the middle. This guy will cause them to spread out. But if we look at these rays, they will look like they came from a point over here. All right, now this idea of parallel rays just kind of helps us understand what the focal point is, but most images aren't made from parallel rays, so we need to figure out how to do these ray diagrams again. And they're very similar to the um, <clears throat> 
to the mirrors. We have three different rays that we can draw. The ray that starts out parallel on a mirror it would be bounced back through the focus, but the lenses transmit the light instead of reflecting it, so it's transmitted on the other side to the focus over here. Okay, another line that goes through the what we could call the, the other focus on the near side of the mirror. When it hits, it's not mirror, lenses now, sorry. When it goes through that focus, it hits the lens and it goes parallel now, parallel to the uh, central axis here. Another way to think about why this happens is, well, if I flip this lens around like I just showed you, that doesn't change its optical properties, even though this one is nice and symmetric, so it obviously wouldn't. If I had a light ray coming this ray that started out parallel, it would go through that point there, so we can kind of think of it going either way there. The last one <clears throat> bounces off the middle. If it were a mirror, this one is a lens, so it gets transmitted right through the middle and just goes straight. So all three of those rays will intersect right here. This is not the focal point, remember, this is just the image location where the light is focused for this particular object. Just make a dang dot, thank you. Okay, for the uh, diverging lenses, we have similar rays. So the one that starts parallel here will go out in this direction and it will appear to have come from the focus. All right, This one here goes straight through the middle and it will go through the focus on the other side. No, I lied. Yeah, no I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay, that guy looks like he's going through that focus and so it comes out parallel. Sorry about that. And then the third ray is the one that goes straight through the center of the mirror. Okay, and again, if we extrapolate, I mean, it's this ray, this ray, and this ray are the actual ones that are coming out of that lens, but if we extrapolate all of those backwards, number two is going to be going straight back here, one is going to be going straight back here, and three uh, just went, did go straight. So all three of those rays will appear to have come from that location there. All right. Now, because all of these uh, rays, all of this geometry is the same for lenses as for mirrors, the only difference is uh, for mirrors the stuff got flipped back and for lenses it got transmitted through over here, uh, we end up with the exact same equation relating the object distance and image distance to the focal length, only now we don't call it the mirror equation, this is now the thin lens equation. Hooray for that. Uh, our sign conventions remain mostly the same. So the uh, focal length is positive for converging and negative for diverging. So that's pretty similar to what we saw with the mirrors. It was positive for concave and negative for convex. The object distance, we're always going to have that positive as long as we only have one object. We're going to get, uh, or one lens, we're going to get to more complicated situations and we're going to modify this a little bit. But for now, this is all we need to worry about. The, this is the one that is a little different. The image distance now, we're going to call that positive if it's on the opposite side of the lens from the object. For a mirror, the image distance was positive if it was on the same side. And there's a good reason for this. This allows us to keep our exact same sign convention for virtual and upright and all of those things, as long as we make this little change here. Okay, uh, the height of the image is positive if it's upright, negative, otherwise. So that didn't change at all either. So number three really is the only thing that changes. And it's a minor change, right? We can live with this. Uh, as I mentioned, all the geometry is essentially the same, so our magnification equation remains the same. And as long as you follow this rule here, this rule number three, then we can still have the negative sign there and not a negative sign there. And all of our conventions will come out to be the same. And I'll review that here at the end in a second. Um, one other distinction for lenses that we don't have with mirrors is we define what we call the power of a lens and this is essentially like how strong the lens is so to speak if you go and get a prescription from an optometrist also known as an eye doctor they might give you a prescription for plus 2.25 or something like that that is the power of the lens so the bigger the number the stronger your prescription means you need a more powerful lens by the way the positive means it's 
converging, and sometimes you can have a negative prescription, and that means you have a, you're getting a diverging lens. So we have power, which is just the inverse of the focal length. So a short focal length means it's a powerful lens. So as this gets smaller, the power actually gets bigger. And we define a unit for the power of a lens called a diopter. We abbreviate it with a capital D, and a diopter is equal to one inverse meter. So because this is in meters, this is one time that we're going to have to worry about the units in our equations. A lot of times when we were using our mirror equation, now morphed into the lens equation. When we're using this guy, I told you earlier, you could just leave it in centimeters or millimeters or whatever you wanted. Well, that is until you're going to flip things to diopters. Then you need to make sure and convert to meters. Otherwise, it's not diopters, it's something else. Okay, so let's summarize here in a nice table. So for converging lenses, this is actually the identical table we had before for concave mirrors. I added the notation here that the focal length is always positive. It doesn't depend on the object position. The focal length is a measure of the lens or the mirror. So for converging and concave, it is always positive. And we have these same things that are going to go on, and I'll show you in the applet here in a second. If you're past the radius of curvature, you're going to get a real inverted shrunken image uh, and so forth. You can read it right. For a diverging lens, it is identical to the convex mirror. They can only produce virtual images, and virtual images will always be upright. So those two things always go together. Virtual is always upright. Real is always inverted. Uh, the magnification changes a bit depending on your location here. For a diverging lens, it's always smaller, just like we saw with the convex mirrors. It's always smaller regardless of the position. So let's grab, <clears throat> let's grab this applet thing here again. So here is my object, and here's those three lines. And if you can see these red tick marks, now there's some on both sides because we kind of consider the lens as like a two-way object. So if I'm right at the radius of curvature, then the magnification is 1. If I go beyond that, then the magnification is between 0 and 1. I guess it's negative 1 here, right? So now it's between 0 and negative 1. Okay. If I get closer than the radius of curvature, my image gets larger, but it's still real and still inverted. Okay. If I get too close, though, essentially the rays are diverging too much from my object to begin with for the lens to be able to focus it. So over here, they stay diverging. I mean, they, they come closer than they were. Like you see, these guys were spreading out a lot. Now they're not spreading out quite as much, but they will still never come to a focus. So we extrapolate these rays backwards. So these green ones here is where we perceive them as having come from. And so we get a virtual image back here that is upright and magnified. This is exactly what you're doing with a magnifying glass. Uh, if you've ever looked closely at it, it has <laughs> two convex surfaces, and they only work when you hold it up close to an object. If you hold a magnifying glass, like hold it up and look, if you happen to have one at home, pause the video and go grab it. So if you're holding that magnifying glass and looking ac at something across the room, well, the objects across the room are what you're looking at. Your eye is over here. And so you're going to see everything across the room is inverted, but then if you hold it up to your desk or a piece of paper or something like that, that's when you get a magnified image, and they're actually virtual. Okay, uh, now we want to look at diverging lenses. So we flip the focal length here, so we have a negative focal length. And just like we expected, we only get virtual images. It doesn't matter where we put our object. The size of our virtual image changes and the location a little bit, but it is always upright, always virtual, and always smaller. Okay, there you have it.